Hi everybody, so on shape. Now we've talked about the general principles, we've talked about how it grows out of your experience with things like Lego and Tinkercad. Now of course what we want to do is explore that a bit more by getting into the nitty gritty of the actual program itself. So the first thing we need to do is open ourselves an account. To do that, type on shape in your web browser, jump across to it, click on get started and follow the on-screen prompts to open yourself up an account. Now every time you go to OnShape's page, you'll see in the top right hand corner, open OnScape and you click on that. That'll take you to this screen and you fill in your email and the password that you set up and click sign in. That'll immediately take you to this startup page, which is a list of all the stuff you've been working on. We don't need to worry about that now, we just need to look at the top left hand where you'll see a blue create button. Click on that and it'll pull up a drop down menu with document folder etc in it. We're going to click on document because it's our very first document. And that will jump us to this page where we can type in the title of the file that we're going to create. And because this is a free account, I don't get a choice between public and private. It is open to the public, but then I'm a great fan of open source, so I don't really care if the public can see my files or not. In fact, I'd rather they could, so it makes it easier for me to share them. Anyway, you click on that, and that jumps you immediately to this, which is the on-source workspace. This is a relatively clean interface. There are three planes here. The top plane, the front plane and the right plane. They're all perpendicular to each other and intersect at the origin, which is the circle with the dot in it. To select things, you use the left mouse button. So if I click on these planes, I've selected them and a number will appear next to my cursor to show me how many items I've selected. If we click on the same plane again, we'll deselect it. You can also press the space bar which will deselect everything or click on the white space within the work area and when you're navigating menus in on shape if you want to stop something cancel out of it just press the escape button you can zoom in and out using the mouse scroll wheel it's also important to know how to rotate your views all you have to do is click and hold down the mouse right button and then scroll around and that will change the orientation. Okay, if you do a lot of scrolling around and you want to reset the view so you can find where you are again, click the right mouse button in the workspace and choose isometric. It's kind of cool to come up to this and click on that corner button. It makes a slight adjustment to the view and it gives a view which I think is more natural to work with. Okay, now we're ready to get started. Now we're just going to focus on the sketch and extrude buttons. So what you do is create a sketch and then extrude it into a 3D object. So press the sketch button at the top left and several things will happen. A sketch dialog appears with the name sketch1 and a message at the top centre pops here saying select a sketch plane. Also notice in the sketch dialog this box is highlighted blue. It's telling us to select a sketch plane. In other words, it wants a sketch plane as an input. And that's the sketch plane that we'll draw our sketch on. Remember, to make a 2D sketch of our shape, we need to put it on a plane. It can't be just floating around in space. We could select any of the planes, but for now, let's just select the top plane. You move your mouse over the plane that you're interested in, it will highlight, and then you click it with the left mouse button. So you can see what now used to be the blue box has the word top plane in it. And you can also see graphically that sketch one is oriented to or overlaps the top plane. If you didn't like that selection, you can press the X here and make another selection. If we think this is a bit cluttered and messy, we can clean up this workspace. We really don't need to see all these planes visually intersecting each other. And we can hide them from view. On the left sidebar here, under default geometry, there are four items. This is the origin, the centre point of the workspace, and it also gets highlighted when you hover your mouse over it. And then you can see the top, front and right planes. When you hover over them, you should notice this eye icon. It's an open eye, it indicates that these items are currently visible. If you click on it, it hides the item from view and makes them invisible in the work plane. So let's hide the three planes and leave the origin in place. If you want to show the planes again, you can come back here and just click on them to show them. Okay, let's create a shape and we're going to make a rectangle. And we have two choices in the drop down menu, a corner rectangle or a center point rectangle. We're going to use center point rectangle. What that does is center the rectangle we're going to draw around the origin. So we hover over the origin until it indicates that you're on there. 
click once and pull out to draw your rectangle. And you move the mouse to size it and then click again to finish it. Alternatively, I could have just held the mouse button down, continue to draw it, release it when it's what I want it to be and that will draw it too. So to look at this flat, what we need to do is make it flat. So click anywhere in the white space and then click view normal to sketch space. And now we have it in the way as a flat drawing and that makes it easier for us to manipulate. To set the size of the rectangle, we need to select the dimensions button. Then you select a side of the rectangle and click once more to place the dimension. It doesn't matter where the dimension goes, just stick it somewhere that you think is good. We can use this to set the side of the triangle. If you click there, it will highlight it and it shows what the current dimension of the side is. Now with on shape, you can choose millimeters or inches, but it will understand if you type in millimeters, it'll do it in millimeters. If you type in inches, it'll convert it to millimeters if you've chosen millimeters to display, but it will still understand what it is that you're putting in there. So let's type in two inches. And you can see it's converted to millimetres, two inches being 50.8 millimetres. So we can set the length, let's say three inches. And the dimension tool you can see here is still highlighted, so we don't need to re-highlight it. So now we can select the other side. And if we type in three inches, again, because I've set it in millimetres, it will convert it to millimetres for me. But it will understand three inches if I type converting it to 76.2 millimetres for me. Now I want this 3D box to have a hole through it. So let's draw a circle on our shape. Select center point circle, hover over the origin and draw out. We can give this a fixed size as well and that means we need to select the dimension tool again because we've just selected circle. Click on the circle, find a place for the dimension, then enter a value. Okay, we're ready for step two and that's to change this 2D sketch into a 3D object. We can change the view back to isometric so we can see what will happen when we extrude our object. Click in the box in the top right of the window and select the first option. Next, click on this green arrow to show that we're done with this sketch for now. Then click on the extrude button on the top left here. The extrude dialog appears and this one is called extrude one. By default, solid is highlighted. Leave that selected because we want to create a solid object instead of just a surface. On the second line here, new is selected by default. And we'll leave that selected because we want to create a new solid. Next, we have the blue box indicating what input it's actually looking for. Faces and sketch regions to extrude. I want to extrude the rectangular shape, but not the circle. So select the rectangular region. And this gives us a preview of what it will look like. If you use the mouse wheel, you can scroll in and out. And notice the hole in the center. And that's because we didn't select the circular region, so that region won't be extruded. If we go back to the sketch plane and click on the circle, Three things will happen. First, in the blue box dialog, another line will be added to include the selection that we just made. Second, the preview shows a complete mass without the hole because we're extruding both the circle and the box. And third, the cursor now has a little two next to it. And that's to tell you that there are two selections made. Okay, click on the circle once again to deselect it because I do want to extrude around the hole and not the hole itself. The next item on the extrude dialog is the end type. By default, blind is selected. This means the extrusion will go a specified distance or if you like, depth. And that means we can change that so that it goes to a specific height. If you click on that drop down arrow, you can see the other types that it has. And of course, you can explore these when doing your drawings. Now, if you click on the button to the right with the two arrows, you can change the, de the direction of the extrusion. Now, we ex if we select the depth and type in, let's do half an inch, seeing as we've been doing this in inches, you can preview the result by just clicking the workspace or pressing tab or pressing enter once. Okay, that's it for now. We can click the green arrow for accept or press enter and that will exit us out of the extrude menu. And there you go, our extruded solid with a hole in the center. So it's like anything, you begin a journey by the first small step and it's always the first small step that's the hardest to take. Now, Andre, 
it, it takes one step back from Tinkercad. In Tinkercad, remember, you're using pre-made primitives, that is, shapes somebody else has made for you, and you can juxtaposition, put those shapes together to create larger objects. With on shape, and actually with all of these drawing programs, because they pretty much all do the same thing, what you're doing is creating the primitives from descriptions of the geometry. Once you get hold of that and the workspace and make that first step, it is very much easier than a lot of people seem to think it is. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.